Hi everyone, it's nice to see you all here. My name is Nicole and I started Anyone Can Garden last year. So today I'll be sharing with you my journey in gardening and how it has impacted the way I see food and food waste. So later on, I'll also be sharing a few gardening tips for you too. Eight years ago, I wanted to grow in many aspects of my life and I used gardening as a reminder for me to keep growing. Even if I didn't have much knowledge or experience back then, I bought some gardening materials and I grew my first batch of plants on our balcony. So this pot on the left is one of the first few pots that I got. And you can see how the original dark red color faded through the years. And the one on the right side is a broccoli seedling. So this is the very first edible plant that I grew and harvested. So eventually I saw how convenient it was to have fresh produce and herbs on hand. And this motivated me to continue growing my own food. For example, instead of buying basil leaves at the grocery store, we get to harvest what we need for the day. And this prevents us from storing excess herbs in our refrigerator, which will rot later on. So here in the photos, you can see the basil plants that I have and some of the flowers and seeds in them. So there, I get to harvest both the leaves and the seeds, which allows me to continue growing new plants and keep harvesting seeds. So by God's grace, I continued to experiment in the garden and I was able to grow a variety of herbs, leafy greens and vegetables. And all of these were grown in raised beds or in pots here at our balcony. So these are some of the photos of the edible plants that I've grown through the years. So because of gardening, I get to appreciate food even more. And before I grew my own corn at home, I remember not being able to savor every kernel of corn, especially when I'm in a rush or when I eat at restaurants. But knowing how crucial pollination is in developing every single kernel on the cob, I gained new perspectives on how amazing our farmers are and how every bit of food counts. So I'm also learning about the cycle of food waste and gardening, specifically how compost and other organic materials help the soil become rich in nutrients and become healthy. And healthy soils will encourage healthy and productive plants. So these plants will then produce food that we can eat and enjoy. And then the new food waste from this can be used again in compost and the cycle continues. These are some of the things that I use in our garden. So this is used coffee grounds. And here are some eggshells that I turned into powder. So I sprinkle both of these materials in the soil. And for the third photo, this is uh, an example of what you can do with compost. So it's a mix of um, fresh nitrogen materials and also carbon materials. I also made use of my old corn plants so you can see the leaves and the stalks. I covered the soil and it acted as a mulch or a protection for the roots of this calamansi plant and through time you can see how it decomposes. So eventually when, when that fully decomposes it will add nutrients into the soil. So gardening has taught me so much through the years and it is my passion to help others grow their green thumbs too. And in case you want to start gardening this year, here are five tips that I can share with you. So first, use your resources. So plants have different needs and you'll first have to check if your gardening space or growing environment is suitable for the plants that you want to take care of. So fruit bearing plants, they usually need more sunlight than some of the herbs or leafy greens. So you can ask yourself, does my area get enough direct sunlight? Is it only during the morning, the afternoon, or the whole day? Do I have enough water supply? Is there an area where I can hang my plants? And most importantly, do I have time to take care of the plants? So in these photos, you can see the one on the left is a ginger plant. So it's growing in a pot and it receives afternoon sunlight. The one in the middle receives a full day sun and it's also growing in a larger container. It's in a raised bed. But on the right side, you can see that there are some plants that can still thrive even if you just place them in a little pot or in a small container. So this is kangkong. So there we have some examples. Tip number two, grow according to season. 
So before planting seeds or buying seedlings, make sure to do your research and check if the plants will grow well during that season. So in the Philippines, there are many herbs and vegetables that can grow all year round, such as okra, kangkong, chilies or ginger, and many more. But other vegetables like tomatoes may not thrive as much during the rainy season, and carrots, broccoli, and other cold season crops will most likely grow better in colder provinces compared to growing them here in Manila. And for our third tip, provide basic requirements. <laughs> so plants need sunlight in order for them to grow. And if you don't have much sunlight in your area, you can consider researching on options for grow lights as an alternative. Plants also need water and containers where the roots can spread out. So the sizes of the containers will depend on the kind of plant that you want to grow. So in the photo, in, uh, you can see tomato plants growing both in the raised bed and in a 12 inch deep pot. So you can also choose to grow them in soil, in compost, in potting mixes, or in water. For our fourth tip, join a gardening community. So growing your own food can be intimidating, especially during the early stages. But when we grow alongside others who also garden, we're able to learn from other success stories and even failures. So I highly encourage you to join communities. There are a lot of gardening groups on Facebook. You can check it online. And you can also get in touch with other fellow gardeners through other online platforms like Instagram or YouTube. Also, in the middle of the pandemic, I started an online page called Anyone Can Garden, where I share gardening tips. So feel free to check it out. I'd love for you to join me there too. And here are some of the examples, um, some of the tips that I shared. So um, those are very specific step-by-step -step guidelines or how to solve issues with plants. You can find them in that page. And for my last tip, start small, but keep growing. So you can start with one plant this month, then do your best to study how to take care of it. And after a few months, you can slowly add more plants at home. So in this slide, you can see this is a Kong Kong container. Um, I planted the left side earlier, and then a few weeks later, I planted another batch. So this is one of the ways where we can have sustainability at home when we grow our own herbs or leafy greens. We can plant them every few weeks or every month, and so our harvest will also be consistent. Those are my five tips for you, and as I close, I do want to share that I sincerely believe that anyone can garden and anyone can learn how to grow and take care of plants. We just need to do our part in researching, in experimenting, and in giving it a go, even if we encounter failed attempts every now and then. So it's also my pleasure to share these things with you, and I'm excited to see how we all can make a positive impact in our environment and in our communities by managing our food waste and by growing in the garden. So thank you.